So on my live stream that you can find on my Twitch, we went over uh, just kind of how we did something like this. That's kind of what I'm going to show you how to do today, and that's just how to create this really nice ornament. Also showed how to do a snowflake, but you know, just a pretty cool way to to fill some letters with some Christmas ornaments and maybe spell something out like Merry Christmas or something. So pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to do is create our little psych. So we've got our plane here. We're going to go ahead and add zeros to this to make it 400, 400, blah blah blah. We'll go ahead and dumb this down to 10. Hit C to make that editable. We're gonna go ahead and zoom out and we're gonna go to our line mode here. Select those edges and I'm gonna middle mouse click to go to the sides here. I like to look at this from the side. And we're just gonna go ahead and hold control while we pull that up. And then we're gonna pull it up and we're just gonna to try to pull that up just a little bit like that. And little segments to try to match the, the size of these. It doesn't have to be perfect because what we're gonna do is we are going to hold alt and then we're going to go to this and click that while we're holding alt and that's just going to go ahead and smooth that out for us so we have this really nice smooth psych wall so now you can just scale that up if you need to so there you go infinite floor just like that we go ahead and create a redshift material material throw that on the floor we're going to make that uh, a sort of an off white a little bit we're going to go ahead and turn the roughness all the way up and the reflection all the way down so now we have this white material on the floor here so let's go ahead and make our ornaments so to do that we can do fun shapes if you want, you can use some spheres, obviously. Those are always classic ornaments. And we can go ahead and bring the radius down to like, I don't know, 20. Yeah. Segments, I like to do 64. And then for the display, I like to switch this to the icosphere just so they're similar like that. And we can probably set that back up to 32. That's probably going to be smooth enough. And that way when we use the dynamics, we're not going to like melt our machine trying to do a whole lot of polygons. So, so now we're going to go ahead and add our little cylinder. We're going to zoom out a bit, pull that up. That's obviously way too big. We're just going to scale this way down to like five, the height down to like two. And we're going to zoom back in and hit E, pull that down. Whoa. There we go. Pull that back up. And just like that, we're going to make this a little bit taller, like five. There we go. And that's just going to be our little edge. We're going to fillet it. <laughs> just a couple segments. And just barely like a 0.25. Yeah, just give that a little edge. We'll add some segments here uh, for the height. There we go. Not too many. We don't need a ton. There we go. And a couple on the cap. Cool. And then we'll do a torus. And we'll go ahead and pull that up. Rotate that around. Hold shift. Rotate that 90 degrees. Uh, yeah, we can just do that. And we'll go ahead and make that really small. So like 3 and maybe 0.25. Okay, we'll pull that down. There we go. Slide that in. We can pull that up a little bit. There we go. Now it's nice. So now we have our little ornament perfectly made here. So what we can do is go to create redshift material. Material. We'll go ahead and we'll make this one a gold. We can use the gold preset. I'm actually going to make it a little more, a little more oranger. Yeah. And we're going to throw that on there. We can take the roughness of that. Actually, crank it up just a bit. Yeah, we don't need to add any really details to this or anything. And we're going to go ahead and put that on our torus as well. And then for our redshift material material, we're going to go ahead and create gold again. But this time we're going to change that and we're going to use like a red. We're going to bring it down to like a deeper red here. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and add max on noise. If you want to max on noise, you can use a noise shader. Uh, sorry, if you don't have max on noise, you can use noise or you can use a C4D shader. Grab that. Uh, go in here, go to noise, blah, 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 and then plug that into a texture and into that. I actually have a tutorial that shows you how to do that. Um, but if you have version 3.0, I believe, that's that has max on noise of uh, Redshift. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and plug that into here so we can see what we're dealing with here. We're going to go ahead and choose um, Veranoi Ver, Ver, <laughs> 1. Set that down to real small, 0.1. That's just going to kind of give it this like glittery look to it. We're going to go ahead and pull this white down to like a gray. There we go. And we can go ahead and actually make that even smaller. Yeah. Take the low clip up a bit. There we go. Plug that into the roughness, reflection roughness, and then boom, to there. So now we're just going to have this like glittery looking red. So we'll plug that onto our ball. Okay. We're going to go ahead and add some light sourcing area light. Middle mouse click to zoom out. 
We're going to take this guy, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, and we're going to bring it straight up. This is going to be our overhead studio light. And we're going to pull it back a bit and rotate it. So this is going to be like a backlight just a bit. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and turn the strength of that down to about 10. Yep. And we can go ahead and make another light, redshift, area light. And we're going to grab this one and pull it off to the left and then back to the front. And then we're going to pull it up. I always like to light things from above a little bit. It's more natural. It's easier to for your eyes to understand what's going on. It's how light naturally hits stuff. If you're ever lighting a person or anything, you always want your lights to be like a 45 degree, degree angle down at them. So it kind of helps. Um, so what I'm going to do with this one real quick is go make sure I'm in my object mode and I'm going to make it fatter, but then squish it back down to 10. And then let's go ahead and shrink it so it's smaller. There we go. And rotate it so it's facing that. We could orient it towards the object if we want to. Uh, by right clicking and then going to this, going to target, and then adding the ornament as a target. But since we're doing a dynamics, we won't do that. But that's how you can do that. So now we can hold, uh, have our object selected, hit W to do world space, hold control, move it over to make a copy of it, rotate that back a little bit, make this the fatter one. So this is going to be kind of our fill. Back that up a bit, hit W again. There we go. So now you can see kind of how that looks in our scene. There we go. And if we hit render on this, there we go. It's not bad. Our speckles are probably too big. Uh, but one thing we're going to want to do is go into our scene. We're going to go to Redshift. We're going to turn the GI on to brute force, brute force, up to 6, bounces up to 512. Okay. And then for our psych, this is way too big, so we're going to scale it down. And pull it up so that it's, we could bring everything else down, but we're just going to pull it up to be right underneath our ornament here. Yep, okay. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. And we'll render this again. There we go. So we'll take this, our red here. We're going to do two things. We're going to make this red uh, a little bit more vibrant, and we're going to change the metal edge tint to a more of a, a red pinkish color as well. And we're going to go ahead into our noise, and we're going to shrink this down even more, real tiny. And we're going to up this back up to like a white. And we'll see that that's going to give us that nice kind of glittery and glossy look to that ornament. Perfect. Okay. That's nice. So we can zoom this back out. We'll, we'll scale this back up and pull this up. You'll see what we'll end up doing here, but we can just hit T and scale that wider. Okay, so now we have these three shapes that make up our ornament. What we can do is right click and go to connect. You can, if you're bold, you can do connect objects and delete. Uh, I don't like to do that just because there's a chance that I need to edit something. So then I just go through and I turn these all off. So I just have my object here and this is my ornament. And so what we could do is we could do make a couple different ones. We could do some that are like longer or whatever, um, which, we, which we can do. So what we can do here is with these, in our sphere, what we can do is go to our shapes here and we can just do a FFD. And we'll put that underneath our sphere, fit to parent, and then we can go in here and select the vertices. And if you notice what we're doing here, the way the FFD works is it's kind of like, um, it just kind of grabs it and warps it. A little bit so if we pull those and we make sure we have our, our selection tool we have it set to not visible objects only so we can select the bottom here and now when we pull this down you'll see we're pulling the whole shape down we can scale that in and we can do the same with the, the object here in the middle we'll pull that in and we can spread that out a bit and then we can grab the top again uh, hit spacebar to go back between your tools and then hit T scale that in very nice. So if you turn this off, you'll see we have sort of this weird light bulb shaped ornament. And what I really want this to be is very sharp and just really scale this in. There we go. Like that. Which is almost, almost too far actually. Uh, scale that in until it's almost at zero. Like that. Yeah, you don't want to go negative. There you go. So now you have this kind of nice classic ornament look as well. Hold control, move that over, grab this. 
go into our materials, we're going to change this to a green, sort of a softer, less saturated green. Obviously, we don't need that to be green. Change this. We're just going to make it shiny. So we're going to leave it at like 0.2. Mm -hmm. Throw that on this sphere here. And now grab all these, right click, say connect objects. This is going to be our ornament too. Cool. Okay. So now let's go ahead and make one more. We're just going to hold control C, control B, copy this to ornament three. This one we're just going to make gold. We're going to go ahead and just take our gold, copy that over, and we're just going to make it a little rougher. And we're going to put that, hold alt, and the, drop it over there, and that's going to replace that color that's on there. That way we don't have to go in and select the polygons or anything. It's just going to go ahead and replace anything that was that color is now going to be this color. So there we go. So now we have our three shapes. Cool. Let's go in and let's make this shiny again. Yeah. So now we have our three ornaments made. Let's go ahead and align them to an object. So here's how we're going to do this. You can do it several ways. You can make a shape like so. Here's a big pyramid. We're going to go ahead and take this pyramid and we're going to just give it a bunch of segments. Let's say 30. Okay. And what we can do is toggle this off in the viewport. We're going to go to MoGraph uh, simulate particles emitter. Take this, pull this up, rotate it, hold shift to rotate it up. And we're just going to look at what this is going to do. It's just going to shoot up. That's perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our three ornaments. We're going to put that in the emitter, go to our emitter to set show objects and render instances, hit play, and you'll see it's just going to shoot them out just like that. And that is fine because what we're going to do is we're going to right click this pyramid and we are going to go to simulate rigid collider body. And then that collider body, we're going to set this to be a static mesh. In our emitter, we're going to right click and we're going to simulation. We're going to rigid body. Under inherit tags, apply to children, individual objects, all. And now when we hit play, you'll see it's just going to like poop out stuff here. So the emitter needs to be cranked up with a, a lot more of these. Maybe even some more speed uh, for this. But check this out. We'll go ahead and make this, say, 200 frames long. And we're going to go ahead and make it emit even more. 100. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. And it's going to fill up and slow down. But it's going to fill up, 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 until you get your shape. And boop. Then you go ahead and hit render. And you'll see, oh, that looks awful. But we can just turn this off in the render view. And now you have uh, just a pile of ornaments <laughs> in a perfect shape. So as you can see, you can make it a shape of a Christmas tree or anything like that. If you want to make a wreath out of these, you would take a torus and pull this up. Make sure your emitter is probably near the top of this. We're going to rotate it around so it's pointing down. And the main thing is to make sure this has enough segments for the dynamics to, to work with. Okay. And we're going to take this and put this on the torus, get rid of this pyramid, go back, hit play. You'll see some are spilling out. So let's make sure our torus is big enough. Let's expand the radius of the torus up like that. And with our emitter instead of here, we're just going to play. We're going to let that fill up. And voila. You got yourself a nice little wreath. <laughs> Turn that off. There you go. Pretty cool wreath. So now you can make your background a little more Christmassy. We can do something like, like a nice deep green. Yeah. And we can take our here. Let's scroll this down. And we're going to grab our lights here. And we're just going to pull those back a bit. Back a bit. And definitely take this one up a bit. 
I'm gonna take all three of those and turn those up to about 50. There we go. So now we have our scene here. That's looking pretty good. What we can do is we can go in here and the post effects, you know, mess with the exposure, bring these down a bit. We can do the contrast up a bit. Take the F stuff to about six, yeah. And then we'll go down here to the bloom, turn that on. Perfect. Um, or the intensity of that, so it's just a little bit, yeah. Turn our streaks on, because it's a very classic Christmas look. Go ahead and turn this threshold of that up to about, I don't know, 85. Is that gonna do anything? No, 50 is the max, okay. Lower our tails down, and turn the intensity of that down so it's just barely there. Yeah, cool. So there you go, now you have this nice Christmas wreath. So now if you wanna do something like a letter, what we can do is go to Mo, uh, to our MoGraph, MoText. We're gonna type in something like Mary. We're gonna go ahead and choose a big thick font, like Dazzle. There we go, make it pretty large. There we go. Like, oops, like so. Wrong button. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and make that deeper. We're gonna add subdivisions for that. Make that deeper like that. We're gonna do five. And we're gonna go ahead and change this to uniform. We're gonna up it like that. And then our caps, we're gonna to need to set to quadril and then regular grid. And then lower the width of that. So we have plenty of geometry for our dynamic objects to work on. So we're gonna go ahead and move our emitter. Uh, we can make it a little smaller so it fits in here a little better, 60 by 60. And we're just gonna pull it in here and we're gonna test with the M first. Okay, we forgot to grab our, uh, we had to put our dynamic tag on this simulation, collider body, static mesh. Okay, spilling out, our emitter's pumping out way too fast. Let's bring it down some. There we go. Nope. Ah, our emitter is missing our object here. Make sure your emitter is actually inside of your object. There we go. So you can see where you're gonna need to add more. So what we're gonna do is, that's actually working, so we're gonna grab our emitter control, slide it over to this side, slide it over to the E, bring it up a bit, slide it over to the R, slide it over to the other R, hold control each time I'm doing this to the Y, and then on the other side of the Y as well. Okay, now we're gonna hit play once we have our Motex turned off here. Boom. Boom. Merry Christmas. There you go. Hopefully that was easy way to figure out how to like fill objects with ornaments or whatever you want, honestly. But ornaments are fun for Christmas. So Merry Christmas. Next time you see me, I'll have a tutorial out. I will have a little baby. I'm very excited. We are very excited. Uh, be sure to check out my website, DerekKirk.net. There are courses on there that are not available anywhere else. Uh, there's two courses that are available on Skillshare. But there are courses like this course is not available anywhere else for now. This is just available on Thinkific. So we've got Intro to Redshift the Basics. And these are very cheap. This is $25, this is $50, and this is $20 for everything you need to know to get started with motion tracking in 3D. So be sure to check those out. Help support me. Do that. Merry Christmas. See you all next time.